Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's different? Well, well, let me give you a hint. We got a big camera upgrade for you. I'm so excited. This is, I feel like, can you see my pores? Can you see every inch of dust on all of the things? This is the highest quality camera I have ever owned. I feel like I'm this proper adult that has to take care of this thing now. Um, and I'm very excited about it. And the first thing we are going to be filming with this new camera is of course preparing you for the future. Now when you're looking ahead thinking of five years from now, you know what the scary thing is? It's almost 2030. I mean, yes, let's not get ahead of ourselves. It's six years away, not five, but it is really, really close. Like this. Which brings up the question, how do you stay ahead? How do you learn skills today that will remain in demand or even become more in demand in the future? That's what we are going to go through today. All right, let's get into it. Oh, hit that subscribe button for more tech, coding, future tech, career, you know, all the good stuff related videos. Now let's get into it. Now listen, don't get me wrong. These lists, this list is going to be very specific skills that you can learn, but we had to start out working our way from number 10 to number one. Number 10 being something you probably didn't expect. Always expect the unexpected. That's tip number one. I'm just kidding. In all seriousness though, coming in at number 10 is actually soft skills. Now you might be thinking, Tiff, these are skills that are the most in demand in IT for the next foreseeable future, for the next six years, seven years. Why are you talking about soft skills? Well, the reality is as tech is progressing at such a rapid pace and also producing tools that allows more people to be technical, get their hands in the weeds, if you will, hands in you know what I mean. At a quicker rate, what will happen is soft skills are continuing to become more and more important if you want to stand out. So the question is, how do you get these soft skills? Well, it's definitely not needed to take a course for soft skills, but if you are like me or millions, billions of others out there, sometimes your technical skills might initially be stronger than your soft skills. So you need to work on them just like you do your technical skills. Here are two courses that I think are great. One is from Coursera, which is Effective Communication for Professionals Specialization. If you are someone who oftentimes feels as though they can't communicate what their thoughts are or accurately get across what you want to, this is for you. Another one is by edX. I love edX. I think they have some great courses on the technical side, but then also too on the personal communication side. So this course is problem solving and critical thinking skills. Now this might be more relevant to people who don't come from a technical background because it's more of that critical thinking that you are building. And that is something that you do get with technical skills. So that's just something to keep in mind. Coming in at number nine is user experience. Now this is an area that is continuing to grow rapidly in demand. And can you guess why? Well, for one reason, it's because everything, everything we're building with AI now, AR, VR, all of this technology requires to have very specific user experiences. Now more than ever is UX and even UI in demand because of that. So what skills are required for user experience? For one, you need to focus on user research, wireframing, and user testing. So this is a role that, yes, you aren't coding per se in it, but you also still need to be pretty technical. But then on the other side, you also need to enjoy interacting with people as you are going to be interacting and testing with users or potential users to gain their feedback. That is how you are going to design these applications. Now you might be thinking, what are some courses for user experience? Maybe you're someone who wants to break into that area, you're further along in your career, and it is of interest to you. We live in a time now where you can go from one role to the other. I love any courses, typically by Google, I would say. You know, they are such a great company, very credible, and it also doesn't hurt to have a certification by Google on your resume. So this course right here is called Google UX Design Professional Certificate. It is a great course if you are looking to level up your skills. Another one, this is really cool. I wasn't super familiar with this site, but it's called Interaction Design Foundation, and they offer really a wealth of knowledge when it comes to user experience and user interface. So go check it out. Coming in at number eight might be one that surprises you at first, which is actually blockchain. Now, if you are someone who is in the blockchain space, you will totally understand why. It is an area that is continuing to grow in demand. Actually, right now, when you go on job postings or look online, blockchain is an area that is most widely looking for people to recruit, which is very interesting. Now, I think here's the thing. Blockchain can sometimes get a little bit of a bad rap, but it's not blockchain that actually deserves this bad rap. Well, I'm not saying any technology does, but what it is also always associated so closely to, of course, is cryptocurrency, which of course, two different things. And blockchain can be used for so many different uh, 
uh, everyday uses, especially when you think of healthcare, when you think of schools, universities, that we really need to separate the two. So this is something, if you are interested in blockchain, this technology is here to stay. It is building our future. We will continue to use it. And here are some good courses for it. Now, one is a certified blockchain developer course, which you can see right here. Oh, by the way, I'm going to link all these courses down below. The other one is a course by IBM called Blockchain Essentials, which I'll also link down below. Now, coming in at number seven is something that encompasses, you could say, many different skills in a way, but it's still its own niche, which is Internet of Things or IoT. IoT is something we interact with, I mean, every single day from our... Why can't I think of an example? Rewind this part. All right, we're back. Now let's try this again. Smart homes, I mean, smart devices are things we use every day when we think of our thermostats, our locks nowadays, the list goes on. And sometimes it's even, as I just had there, easy to forget what we interact with with IoT on a daily basis because it's so ingrained in our lives nowadays. There's so much potential though for you if you are looking to upskill in an area to get involved in IoT. It's a fascinating industry, a fascinating job that you can really have within it. When you think IoT, you can think of things such as embedded systems, sensor technology, and wireless communication protocols. There's so much to it. So because there's so much to it, we need, there's no surprise, there is a ton of different courses on IoT, but here are some of the top ones. The first one is Cisco's Certified Network Associate. So this is a CCNA industrial certification. So this is a really great certification. If you're a bit further along in your career and looking to level up with a certification in IoT. Another one that's more so for beginners is IoT Fundamentals Connecting Things. So this is a course by Coursera, and if you are just beginning your career in IoT, I would definitely recommend checking this one out. Next on the list, coming in at, what number are we at? Coming in at number six is DevOps. Now DevOps is something that not only is in demand right now, but will continue to grow in demand, especially as tech continues to move faster and teams become more agile. DevOps will become even more essential, which kind of feels impossible at this point. Now here are a few tools or technologies you will be working with when in a DevOps role. Some include Docker, Kubernetes, and Jenkins. Now listen, in some roles you won't be using all that, in others you'll be using different ones, but those are a really good place to start when you are looking into DevOps. Now, most people don't just start their IT career in DevOps. It's something that you come from either a software development background. I mean, I've even seen people more from the product management side get into DevOps. So there is multiple paths you can take to get into DevOps. But of course, one of the best ways is through some courses. AWS has a great DevOps course. It is called AWS Certified DevOps. DevOps engineer, and this is professional level. You can see it on screen here, and I'll link it down below. Another one, I mean, Kubernetes is still so in demand and such a niche skill, I think. I remember about a year and a half ago when I was job hunting, I would always see developer advocate roles specifically for Kubernetes, and it's a whole other world. So that is why this course here is dedicated just to that, which is Kubernetes Certified Application Developer, or CCAD. CCAD? You know what I mean. Next on the list, coming in at number five is full stack web development. Yes, I know you see all these crazy headlines of how AI is going to overtake web developers. We are far from there. And trust me, when or if we ever get there, so many other roles will be taken as well that we will have evolved with AI in this tech by that time. Now, what has happened though, is this role does look slightly different. We are now using these tools in our everyday jobs to code better, faster, more collaborative even. It doesn't mean it's a bad thing per se. And you can see that by the number of jobs that are still open and in demand for full stack web development. So if you are someone who is thinking, should I learn how to code? I feel like I'm going to waste all my time learning how to code and then AI is going to take it over. Please do not let those thoughts take over. The reality is it is one of the most in-demand areas that you can really put your focus to and learn not only today, but in the foreseeable future as well. And four courses on web development, I mean, there's endless ones, but one resource I really love to use is Free Code Camp. I mean, one, I used it so much when I was first learning to code. Two, it's free. Three, it is, it's taught by some of the world's biggest experts. They're thought leaders. They're such great educators. And I feel like they do a great job of breaking it down. I, I really love Free Code Camp. So any of their courses are so well done and well thought out. I like also too, they have a lot of smaller projects you can build. So I link them down below too. Coming in at number four, I mean, it's no surprise. It's the new oil. Can you guess what that is? 
data and analytics. These skills around data science and analytics professionals, they are continuing to grow in demand. Data is not running out. We are continuing to gather more and more data. And oftentimes the quality of this data is getting worse, especially because of AI. We love AI, but then on the other hand, it's kind of muddling some waters. So if you are someone who is interested in data science or becoming a data analyst, either of those roles, it is such a great area for you to focus on, not only for now, but to feel confident that what you are spending time on now will evolve and grow with these AI tools and other technologies in the foreseeable future. Now there's endless courses on data science and analytics. Here are two ones that really stand up to me though. One is IBM's Data Science Professional Certificate and the other is Certified Analytics Professional or CAP. Now I like both of these because you end up with a really great certification and especially for the IBM one, it's a great way to have that big tech, well, not big tech, but what is IBM? Consulting. So it's not big tech, but it's big four. No, it's not big four consulting. IBM, it's a great company. You're gonna have it on your resume. Now, I feel like this one should be number one for how hot it is, how hot it is, yeah. But it's number three right now, and that's because there are some that are even hotter, if you will. I need to find a new word other than hotter. It sounds weird. But this is cybersecurity, and no surprise here, cybersecurity is coming more and more in demand, especially thanks to all the tech coming out so quickly. On one hand, it's great tech's coming out, but on the other, it really enables people who maybe shouldn't have this technology to have it. And that is where cybersecurity comes in. Now within cybersecurity, there are so many different areas that you can focus in on that it's kind of like this interesting or exciting time that you can really pick, okay, do I want to focus on uh, reverse engineering? Do I want to focus on uh, more on the security side, security within cybersecurity? But there are so many areas and facets to it that are really exciting. And this isn't a role that you have to be technical in. Yes, there's a lot of technical roles within cybersecurity that you can learn and gain skills for, but equally there are so many roles on the business side, you need to be so knowledgeable about cybersecurity practices as well. Now coming in at number two is something that was holding number one spot for a long time, just recently got pushed down to number two, which is cloud computing. This area is still so in demand, skills and knowledge within cloud computing is continuing to grow in demand and will for the foreseeable future. Now, like all the topics we have been covering today, there is so many different areas that you can really focus in on with cloud computing. So make sure to do your own research when it comes to cloud computing, but here are two great courses I would recommend. Don't, don't. All right, coming in at number one is AI and machine learning. And I'm sure that's no surprise, especially with our last few years, how quickly AI has grew into our everyday lives. It's something that we use. I oftentimes will Google things or I'll oftentimes use Claude or ChatGPT to search things instead of using Google now, which is just such an interesting time to be part of. Now, there are so many roles within these two fields that you can learn about and grow skills within. I mean, think about the business side of things, really understanding the ethics with AI, really understanding the business challenges. There are so much there. And then on the flip side, things such as machine learning engineers are one of the top, well, the top in-demand roles for 2024. So if you are someone who's already a developer or technical individual, I would definitely suggest checking that out. That being said though, this isn't something that you can just shift right into. It's something that people study for years and years. So if you are looking to get into these areas, it is a really great time because it is so in demand that you might be able to get some of these positions with a little bit less experience and then learn on the job. Now, of course, here are some courses that are great for AI and machine learning, but just like all of these courses that I'm recommending, it really depends on what area you want to focus in on. <sighs> all right, if you made it this far in the video, I am I love you extra, extra amounts because you made it to the end. Comment if you made it to the end, by the way, because that is really awesome. I hope you enjoyed going through this. These are some of the top in-demand skills, in-demand areas that will continue to grow. And they're one of these things that are really exciting. Even if you aren't in any of these areas, it really helps to be aware of what is in demand and just start learning a little bit on the side. It doesn't mean you have to do a full career switch or uh, completely leave what you're studying now, but just start figuring out what you are passionate about and growing it that way. All right, make sure to hit that subscribe button and I will see you all soon. Oh, also, how would you like the new camera? Bye everyone.